Blessed and pleasant good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to morning prayer for this morning, the 30th day of November. I do pray you are having a wonderful morning this morning, and of course, we give God thanks for the blessing of a new day. We're going to start this morning off with one entitled, On Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry. Of course, we have begun yesterday, <clears throat> pardon me, we have begun yesterday, the season of Advent, and so we will have some lovely Advent hymns coming up. So we begin with this one on Jordan Bank, the Baptist cry. Let's have a listen. <laughs>
I enjoyed that one and I hope you did as well. It is one of my favorite Advent hymns. We will continue then by getting our words up on screen that we could continue for this morning. Today we will be looking at, whoops, I'm out of focus there. Today we will be looking at the Feast of St. Andrews since we celebrated St. Andrews as a transferred feast yesterday. Today, the 30th November, is actually the date for the Feast of St. Andrews, and it is, of course, Independence Day on the island of Barbados. Yes, yeah, so we want to wish the country and people of Barbados a happy and blessed Independence Day today. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Words from Psalm 122, verse 1. Using versicle 1 on page 35. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle, the Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100. And if you are following along in your books of common prayer, it is on page 37. O shout to the Lord in triumph for the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, and his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause briefly to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we would have committed that would have been displeasing to God, that would have been unfair to our neighbors, or that would have been unjust to our very selves. For those times and those moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we have the reading of our psalm, and our psalm for this morning is Psalm 34. Let's have a listen. It's going to be read for us by Mr. Tyler Yearwood. Here we go. The psalm for today is Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you are, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who among you loves life and desires long life to enjoy prosperity? Keep your tongue from evil speaking and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil to evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. 
The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will, see, he will keep safe all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Thank you so very much, Tyler, for leading us in the psalm this morning. We will continue then with our second canticle for today, canticle number nine, the first song of Isaiah, based on Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2 through to 6. Surely it is God who saved me. I would trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our Bible lesson for this morning is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verses 1 through to 6, and it will be read for us by Dr. Grace Shogreen. Let's have a listen. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Dr. Shogreen for leading us in the reading for this morning. And this morning, instead of reflecting on the reading, I would like us to talk a little bit about St. Andrews. And yesterday we talked about St. Andrew, um, and we are thankful for the service we were able to participate in with the people of St. Andrew and Reverend Lisbeth and the bishop and the traveling crew with him. But I wanted to get into a little bit more about St. Andrew. As you would have heard yesterday, St. Andrew is a prominent figure in the New Testament, but is not mentioned quite often in the New Testament itself. Andrew and his brother Simon Peter were two of the first that were called by Jesus to become his disciples. And of course, most of the reference to Andrew in the New Testament simply includes him as on the list of the 12 apostles or group him with his brother Simon Peter. And we know that Simon Peter became Petros, the rock upon which God built his church. Now, Simon Andrew, sorry, appears to be acting as an individual three times in the Gospel of John. Um, when a number of Greeks visit um, and wish to speak with Jesus, they approach Philip, who tells Andrew, and the two of them tell Jesus. And this is found in John chapter 12, verse 20 to 22. And it may be relevant here that both Philip and Andrew are Greek names. So it somehow seems that because they are Greek, the Greeks came to him or them to go and see Jesus. He's mentioned again before Jesus feeds the 5,000. It is said that Andrew is the one who says, here is a boy with five barley loaves and two fish. And of course, the first two disciples whom John reported as attaching themselves to Jesus 
are Andrew and another disciple who John does not name, but who is commonly supposed to be John himself. And John never mentions himself by name in his gospel, but of course, it is just believed that that is it. Now, having met Jesus, Andrew then finds his brother Simon Peter and brings him to Jesus. Yes, and so on this occasion, he is mentioned as an individual. Yeah, but on each indication that he is, he becomes an instrument of bringing others to meet Jesus. He is the one proclaiming the Messiah to to other individuals. So he brings his brother Simon Peter. He brings the Greeks who want to see Jesus. He brings the boy who has the five loaves and two fish. So he is mentioned on each of the three occasions where he is spoken of as an individual and not just simply a part of the 12. He is mentioned as someone who is instrumental in introducing others to Jesus. Of course, um, in the Episcopal Church, the Fellowship of St. Andrews is one that is devoted to encouraging personal evangelism. What is personal evangelism? We or us as individuals not being afraid or ashamed to tell people about Christ and to bring one's friends, one's colleagues, one's co-workers to a knowledge of the gospel of Christ. That is what the Fellowship of St. Andrews is about. So it is about personal evangelism, not depending, <coughs> pardon me, not depending so much on a church or a group, but you being willing to tell somebody personally about your experiences with Christ. And just as Andrew was the first of the apostles, so his feast is taken to be the first feast in the church, church's liturgical year. So the first Sunday of Advent is defined to be the Sunday um, nearest to the Feast of St. Andrews. And in many cases, the feast is transferred like it was yesterday from the 30th, which is today, to the first Sunday of Advent. And several centuries, of course, after the death of Andrew, it is said that some of his relics were brought, were brought by a missionary named Rule to Scotland. And it was placed there um, in a in a place called Fife, I think that's why you pronounce it F I F E, but it is not known as Saint Andrews. And the best known um, site, or Fife, is best known for for a famous club club not golf. I'm trying to say golf and club at the same time. Fife is best known for a famous golf course. But the thing about it is, if this is the site where the relics um, of St. Andrews are, are to be found, then why is it that there is no, you know what, no calling of the place by the, by the saint name? Of course, St. Andrews is the patron saint of Scotland. Now, it is said that throughout the Roman Empire, um, Peter and Paul, who were the most famous apostles, were responsible for building the congregation in Rome. And of course, while this is true, you would think that there was no mention of, of Andrew. But it is said, according to history, yes, that um, the founder of Byzantium was, and his first bishop, was said to have been Andrew, the brother of Peter. And they point out that Andrew had been one of the first apostles to follow Jesus and that he had brought his brother to Jesus. And Andrew thus then was the Peter before Peter, one um, writer John um, Chrysostom wrote. Yes, and of course, the Russians and the Byzantine Empire became, of course, took on Andrew as their patron saint. Yes, so it's interesting. Andrew is the national saint of Scotland, as I said before, and um, he is highly revered and honored there. And it is said that Andrew was crucified on an X-shaped cross. So his symbol is a cross, saltire, which means a, a cross in the shape of an X. Um, whether the, the crucifixion of Andrew on an X-shaped cross is true, it is said that he opted for an X-shaped cross like the inverted one of his brother because he did not deem himself to be worthy enough to be martyred or killed in the same manner as the Savior of the world. And this X, you will be able to find this X on the national flag of Scotland, yes? Which, of course, again, is a tribute to their patron saint, Andrew. And it's interesting because, men, 
for someone who is not mentioned a lot, his role as a personal evangelist is what stood out and is what is honored in the places where he is revered as their patron saint. And we could learn a lot from Andrew in terms of he didn't do much. Like there was no real limelight on him. But when it came to telling people about his faith and what he had experienced with Jesus, there was none like him. And so today we celebrate the Peter before Peter, Peter's brother, Andrew. We pray that like blessed Andrew, we will be bold enough to proclaim our faith and use our lives as a personal testimony to evangelize and draw more hearts to God. Amen. We'll continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. For our suffrages, we use form A on page 43. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. We begin our period of prayer and intercession with the collect for the Feast of St. Andrew the Apostles. Let us pray. Almighty God, who gave such grace to your Apostle Andrew that he readily obeyed the call of your Son, Jesus Christ, and brought his brother with him, give us who are called by your Holy Word grace to follow him without delay and to bring those near to us into his gracious presence, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And to call it for the first Sunday of Advent. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And finally, I call it for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemy, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversary. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to offer our personal prayers and intercessions unto Almighty God, beginning with giving Him thanks for the gift of this brand new day. We join with those who are about to start a new year of life. We remember in our prayers Father Victor Gill, who is in um, Peru, Miss Ivy Flores, Miss Fiona Usher, and Miss Salilu Young. Today, we also pray for all those who will be traveling and leaving the country. We pray for God's protection over them and that his guidance goes before them 
in order to make straight their path. We continue to pray and offer God thanksgiving for persons who are recovering from illness and surgery. We pray for those who are still on the road to recovery and we include in our prayers this morning Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Agnes, Miss Celine, and Miss Agnes V. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Jane, Miss Grace, Miss Yolanda, Miss Marta, and Miss Beryl. We remember in our prayers Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Sonia, Miss Justine, Miss Donna, Miss Zoila, and Miss Amelia. We pray for Miss Mary, Miss Harris, Miss Marva, Miss Gertrude, Miss Felicia, Miss Leslie, and Miss Crystal. We continue to join in prayer and we cover in prayer our brothers, Mr. Hilbert, Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Eliseo, and Mr. Normando, Mr. Cecil, Mr. Larry, Mr. Finley, and Mr. Rupert, Mr. Leon, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Costa, and Mr. Enrique. Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Ian, and Canon George. Mr. Linsford, Mr. James, Mr. William, and Mr. Glenford. Mr. Alfred, Mr. Nicholas, Mr. Ivan, and Mr. Michael Samuels. We pray as well for Mr. Michael Soberanis and our young brothers, Emery and Norman. We continue to pray for the protection of our loved ones who are far away from us. Today, we remember in our prayers the following individuals, our students, Tammy, Anwa, Karina, Courtney, and Ashley. We pray as well for wayfarers at sea, persons in the various forms of quarantine, individuals stuck in countries not their own due to the closure of borders, as well as those awaiting repatriation efforts to be reunited with their family. We pray as well for our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil and Jade at this time. We continue to pray for the enablement and protection of all our medical professionals in the performance of their duties, praying for our doctors, Dr. Molina, Dr. Manzanero, Dr. Shogreen, Dr. Joseph, and Dr. Arana. We remember our nurses, Nurse McKinn, Nurse Gill, Nurse Orell, Nurse Joyce Lynn, Nurse Merlin, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alberta and Nurse Alejandra. We continue to pray as well for healing for persons who are infected by COVID-19. We continue to pray for a cure for this disease. We pray for its containment and elimination as well. We remember all persons who would have died as a result of COVID-19 and those loved ones who grieve their loss, as well as pray for all who are mourning or bereaved at this time praying for God's peace to be upon them, and praying for eternal rest for those who have died. We continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for those industries most severely affected by this pandemic, and we pray for those that are recovering at this time. We pray and we ask for God's provision upon persons who would have lost employment, persons whose salary would have been reduced, persons who are in general Find it, finding it difficult to make ends meet. We pray and ask that God's peace and God's provision continues to be with them. We as well continue to pray for the members of our security forces, those who are charged with enacting the laws that are meant to govern us. We pray as well for those in government offices and positions of public trust and authority, praying for God's divine wisdom and guidance as they make decisions on our behalf. We pray for the church leaders and the churches as well, um, remembering that while they might not be legally classified as um, frontline workers and first responders, that they do much in order to secure our well-being spiritually and um, morally at this time. We continue to pray for the private sector and all non-governmental organizations who are involved in the fight against COVID-19 19 or any type of humanitarian effort that makes life a little bit better for others. We continue then and pray for members of the international community who presently suffer as a result of COVID-19. And of course, we continue to ask God's protection against natural disasters, as well as praying for the recovery efforts of those who were recently affected. 
by natural disasters. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your law and the works of your commandment, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, I want to thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining us for morning prayer this morning. I want to thank all of you who joined us for our Sunday Eucharist yesterday at 8 a.m., we want to thank Bishop and Mrs. Wright, as well as the parishioners and the priests, Reverend Lisbeth um, of St. Anne's Parish, as well, for such a wonderful service yesterday. And of course, we can't forget Mr. Tutti. We thank Mr. Tutti very much for his years of service and his continual prayers and blessing over us as an Anglican people and indeed as a country. We remember the other um, clergy in that area, as well as the churches that are affiliated with the parish of St. Andrews. Um, San Andres, Annunciacion, um, um, I forget the name of the church in Selena. I think that's the one that's called Annunciacion, but we pray for Reverend Peralta as well as Reverend Olivia, who minister in that area, and of course, for all the members of the ministry team and the congregations as well. So we pray God's blessing for, upon you guys at this time. I remind you of our services for today. For today, we have a noonday prayers at midday, followed by children's Bible minutes at 2.30. And then we have evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. to close off the day. I want to thank you for joining us for any or all of these services. And of course, for your continual support of the work and ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We will conclude this morning then with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace and our closing in. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with one entitled the Corinthian song. I like the first line of the song. It says, I may be troubled, but I'm not distressed. You know why? Because in the midst of my trouble, God is still there. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Do all you can to ensure your safety and that of your family. Use your mask. Practice your physical distancing, sanitize as much as possible, and if you don't have to, stay home. God bless. Until tomorrow. Bye for now. I am troubled, yet not distressed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Cause I'm a vessel full of power With a treasure none can compare Persecuted but not forsaken Cast down but not destroyed Cause I'm a vessel full of power With a treasure from the Lord I am troubled yet not distressed Perplexed but not in despair I'm a vessel full of power With a treasure none can compare Persecuted but not forsaken Cast down but not destroyed